This presentation is brought to you by Sovereign Laboratories, manufacturers of the most bioavailable colostrum on the market, clinically proven to heal leaky gut syndrome. You see the picture here? I did cardiovascular surgery for 29 years. The last seven years I've been in uh, New York City doing a health and wellness practice. I show this because in this picture is my favorite mentor when I was in training, Dr. Jim. He gave me personal advice, professional advice, business advice, things that we never got in medical school. Well, Dr. Jeff Life is gonna be talking to us later. I know Jeff for more than 10 years. We worked together as physicians for several years. And what you can look at is Dr. Jeff Life can be a mentor for all of us as far as optimization. Now I started my surgical career off and about halfway through there were several things that were happening that made me stop and think. I had a couple of patients who were on oxygen for COPD and they went and had intravenous peroxide therapy and came home and did not need to have, be on oxygen. Then I had many patients that would sent to me for surgery I'm screening them and these patients are on 20 different medications and it just doesn't make sense to me. Then I had a patient who had a unilateral swollen leg sent to me for a vascular exam. I put the patient through the exam and could not come up with any vascular cause for the swollen leg. Patient left, I didn't have any diagnosis for him except it was not vascular in nature. Two months later, they came back. I had a CAT scan, an MRI, went to this specialist, other specialist, and I went to a chiropractor and he popped my pelvis and I don't have any swollen leg anymore. So I got to thinking, well, okay. They didn't teach us about chiropractic in medical school, but I had a chronic neck injury from football and I was seeing a chiropractor. And after about a year, I asked him, how come you know, I, I noticed this year I don't have any allergies. And he says, probably we're clearing up the immune system in the neck and maybe that's what's working for you. Well, this became, this became very personal for me when my 13-year-old boy, when he was in middle school, woke up one day, very good athlete, and his knee was swollen. I took him to the orthopedist the orthopedist could not find any uh, structural problem, said ibuprofen and crutches. So here's Corey on crutches, going to middle school, can't go out for sports. And after one week, I was either gonna kill him or he was gonna kill me. So I took him back to the orthopedist. He scoped the knee, he looked at the fluid, came up with nothing. What do we keep doing? Crutches, ibuprofen. I took him to a rheumatologist. The rheumatologist put him through a very complete workup. And he comes walking into the room and he claps his hands and he says, guess what? This is not rheumatoid arthritis. And I said, okay, what is it? Monoarticular arthritis of unknown etiology. And I says, really? So what do we do about it? Well, I would do the ibuprofen and the crutches and it'll run its course. Well, I took Corey to the chiropractor at this point, the one I was going to, measured the legs, looked at the back, and he says, you know, Corey, you took a good hit uh, this, this year in football. And popped his pelvis, and two days later, the knee was normal, and he's never had any problems since. So about this time, I took three years, as far as evening classes for three years, and obtained a doctorate in natural medicine and practiced alternative medicine and some alternative things with cardiovascular surgery. And then it came to a time when I needed to have a physical exam. It had been six, seven years. I'd never had any problem. Fasting blood sugar was always in the 80s. And I saw an exam that looked like it was a little bit better than what I've had and I decided to go for this. And as part of the blood work, 
they drew a serum insulin. My serum insulin was 12. I don't like that at all. My hemoglobin A1C was 6.2, and it hit me like a brick in the face. There's something not right here. And it was at this point where I slowed down the surgical practice, I closed it, and moved here to New York to do the wellness practice. Now, typical patient I have in the wellness practice will come in, let's say a 55-year-old gentleman, maybe a little bit of a paunch, but everybody says he looks really good for his age. And he exercises, he tries to eat right, and I ask him, what is the state of your medical health? Oh, pretty good, doc, pretty good. All right, are you on any medications? Well, I take a cholesterol pill, uh, I take a blood pressure pill, a little heart pill. Oh, they just started me on something for sugar diabetes, and I take a Viagra every now and then. I said, oh really? So you think that uh, this is healthy? And many times the patients tell me, doc, at my last physical, I was told all my numbers looked good. And this is what I'm finding. Probably 80, 85% of the population do not understand optimization. They don't. And I like to think in a picture of the human machine and looking at the level of function of this human machine. I tell the patients, it's your sweet spot. We're trying to hit your sweet spot where your machine is working like it did. You're 55, you're taking your cholesterol medicine. Did you have to take it when you were 35? No. Well, there's several things that I look at when I follow patients. For instance, on hormone optimization, uh, you know, having to look at a hormone orchestra. You've got several sections in this hormone orchestra. Thyroid, adrenal, sex hormones, growth hormone, others. And when I follow patients on hormone optimization, I like to get a complete set of labs every time, two, three times a year when we do this. Metabolic syndrome is reversible many times with hormone optimization. And I even end up following cholesterol levels, even if the levels are in the normal range, to see them start to trend down, to see the LDL begin to trend down as patients approach this sweet spot in their optimization, I see this all the time. I had a patient, 71 years old, very successful CEO, a little bit overweight, out of shape, and he says, I want to start to enjoy life. So he came, I felt he was a candidate for testosterone replacement, taught him to give himself a shot two times a week, and he came back about three months later with his first set of labs. And I'm sitting there looking at the labs, and I look at him, and I said, Fred, you've not been taking your testosterone. No, 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 I can't. I went to my cardiologist, and the cardiologist told me this was gonna kill me. I says, okay, well, what did the cardiologist recommend for you? He put me on this very strict diet, and I've lost 20 pounds. I said, okay. As part of the initial exam, I had done a DEXA scan for body composition, looking at percent body fat, the android or visceral fat, that sort of thing, but it also gave us grams of lean muscle mass as well as fat. I said, come on back here. And of the 20 pounds that he lost, he lost 15 pounds of lean muscle and he lost five pounds of fat. And I looked at him and I said, Fred, you're in trouble. This is not good. And he goes, no, no, my cardiologist says no, no testosterone, so he left. Three months later, in a very high class restaurant here in, in, in Manhattan, he was out to eat with his wife and he fell over dead. So following body composition is very, very important as far as what goes on with, you know, with longevity. I gave some examples of what tipped me over to natural medicine. Probably the most influential patient was a gal by the name of Donna. She was sent to me six months after she had a mastectomy positive axillary lymph nodes, and along the mastectomy scar, she had several nodules that had grown. I knew this was local recurrence. I biopsied it to prove it. And if you look at the textbook, what it'll tell you is that with this sort of presentation, five-year survivals, 
10%, 10 year survival is nothing, okay? So I, my recommendation to her was, okay, we need to do a wide excision. This was before I did my natural medicine stuff. Wide excision, skin graft, you gotta have x-ray treatments, you have to have chemotherapy. Donna looked at me and she said, Doc, no more mutilation, no burning, and no poisoning. I says, what are you gonna do? Well, she says, my, my oncologist fired me because I wouldn't follow his, his recommendations. I just need somebody to order some lab work every now and then and just monitor things. So I got involved with Donna. You know, she'd do things like these lesions would get ulcerated and she would get, she'd put olive oil on them. They'd get a little bit better. Then the lesions would ulcerate again. They got much better when she changed her diet from fast food, processed food. She washed all the fruits and vegetables with food grade peroxide. And it would be interesting because she'd go on vacation for two weeks and they'd flare up again because she'd be eating restaurant food. There was another time they ulcerated and got worse. And she said that her 18 year old nephew died in an auto accident. And so she was grieving. Two months later, she comes in and things were better. And I said, what have you been doing? I've been praying and meditating. Okay. So I'm following Donna along and about three years into the course, she started doing some biooxidative therapy. She was getting intravenous hydrogen peroxide. Six months later, I noticed we haven't had any ulcerations in these lesions for a long time. And then a few months later, I saw her and I said, you know what? I think these lesions are getting smaller. Well, another six months later, and there's no lesions. Donna is 24 years out today, and I can't find any evidence of any cancer with her. So, you know, obviously what she did a lot of was detoxification. But think about this. If patients don't get this, how about our medical colleagues? Cancer thrives in a toxic environment. They don't, they don't even pay attention to that. Cancer loves sugar. How much is diet a part of the presentation? And the last thing is cancer hates oxygen, all right? You tell an oncologist that uh, we're going to do biooxidative therapy and he'll throw his hands up and he'll say, no, 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 that'll ruin my chemotherapy. And this is what we face. So I know Dr. Jim, one of the things that he said to me one time, we're walking down the hall and he says, you know, um, good judgment comes from experience. I'm 66 years old today, I've got my Medicare card and I'd like to keep going and keep helping patients learn about this stuff. There was a guy one time, he was in the office and he went through his complete annual checkup sitting across the desk from his doctor and leans forward, puts his hands on the desk and says, okay doc, from what you're telling me, if I would quit smoking my two packs of cigarettes a day and if I would quit drinking my fifth of whiskey every night and I'd quit chasing after women every night, that I'd live longer? The old doc just leaned back in his chair, shook his head and says, no, but it'll seem longer. Thank you very much. <laughs>